The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Get your Pierce Pots ready, because here's Task Sets 1984, Commodore 64 Billboard em up, Poster Paster. In Poster Paster, you have one simple task to accomplish. Hang posters in the provided frame. Your character, Bill, has all the tools of the trade at his disposal, including a movable ladder, a bucket of paste, and a brush. Oh, and the poster itself, which comes in segments and is stored in the rack you can see on the left of the screen. The gameplay loop is simple enough then. Grab a piece of the poster, move the ladder to the correct position, climb up and slap the poster piece in the right place. Obviously, it's not as easy as I'm making it sound. For starters, Bill is under constant assault from strange wandering creatures that will kill him if they bump into his legs. They run across the screen, occasionally moving up or down as they approach in a manner that seems random, but which I am convinced was purposefully designed to cause as much annoyance as possible. You can avoid the creatures by walking around them or climbing onto your ladder, or you can kill them by flicking a wad of paste off your brush. That gets rid of them in one hit, so having your projectile paste attack is extremely useful and your best form of defence. Having managed to pick up one piece of the poster, it occurs to me that I don't know which part of the poster this is. Oh well, I'll just chuck it up there and see what happens. Now, Bill is clearly a highly trained professional, but I have to question his decision to put the posters so far away from the frame. Oh, I know they're only a few steps away, but once you get a few stages into the game, they might as well be at the bottom of the bloody Mariana's Trench, as we shall see. There we go, all done. It's a Commodore 64 logo, not the main C64 logo. I forgot exactly where it's from, but I think it appeared on early C64 models, which makes sense because Poster Paster was released in 1984. Oh god, this game's nearly the same age as me. No wonder it's so creaky and difficult to control. That's the basic gameplay loop of Poster Paster then. It's fairly straightforward and it's unique, I'll give it that. Full credit to Taskset for creating an interesting gameplay concept out of billboards. Turns out, you just need to take the job itself and add in roaming gremlinoids. I'm still not sure what's going on with those monsters actually. You'd think Bill's work would be interrupted by the common enemies of the billboard technician. You know, high winds, roving gangs of delinquent teens, sub banksy graffiti artists who think that spray painting who's watching who on a Sky TV advert will really wake up the masses, that kind of thing. Instead, you're attacked by walking watering cans and the little blobs like the one on the left that look like Horace grew a pair of antenna and a sense of humour. Maybe they represent Bill's DTs. Billboard pasters are famously a hard drinking bunch. Naturally, things get more complicated as the game goes on. Bigger posters with more pieces for starters. I'm getting a handle on how everything goes and I dare say I'd be enjoying the game if it wasn't for one small, teeny tiny, almost insignificant detail. The controls are terrible. Moving Bill around on his own is fine, so is firing paste bullets because you just have to tap the fire button. After that, everything rather falls apart. Take the poster pieces for instance. To pick one up, you walk over and press fire, but you're going to want a specific poster piece, and so you have to take the very tip of your brush, the pixel at the end of its sprite I mean, and place it directly over the poster piece you want. As you can see, the individual poster pieces are very small, so trying to pick up a poster involves place one pixel over a 4x4 group of pixels, and that's exactly as annoying as it sounds. At first it's frustrating, but once you get further into the game and start filling in even larger posters with the slightest ever in positioning causing you to lose your poster, it quickly becomes torturous. Grabbing a poster is nothing compared to moving the ladder though. You can push it left or right, yeah, and it often requires a lot of small adjustments to get it into place. 
but to move the ladder you have to stand underneath it and press up on the joystick which causes Bill to grab the ladder and then you can move it around. It's simple in theory, but in practice it'll make you hiss the phrase fecking ladders through gritted teeth more often than a support group for extremely superstitious people. The biggest, most aggravating problem is that there's no way of knowing whether or not you're holding the ladder. There's no visual clue. Bill's sprite doesn't change. The ladder doesn't change colour. Nothing. So, you end up spending 90% of the game standing underneath the ladder, wiggling back and forth to try to discern whether you've grabbed the bloody thing. But you haven't, so you accidentally start climbing the ladder. All of this while an endless swarm of monsters nibbles at your ankles. There's a scale on your paste, which you can see at the top of the screen, that runs from water at one end through states that sound like rejected seven dwarves, like runny, lumpy and thick, all the way to solid at the other end. Flicking projectiles at enemies dries out your paste, so there's a balancing act in keeping your paste at a usable consistency. Poster Paster is yet another 80s home computer game that was almost ruined by awkward controls and a punishing difficulty level. But there's still a lot to like about Poster Paster, such as the concept itself, its sense of humour, and the fact you have a projectile weapon that can fall into lumpy status. It's still marginally less frustrating than trying to hang wallpaper yourself, so get it loaded up on your Commodore 64 and give it a whirl, but before that, don't forget to hit the like button and also please consider subscribing to the channel. What did you think of this game? Let me know in the comments. Maybe stick around to see more Commodore classics coming up next. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you there. Until then, bye for now.